three, two. Welcome to the Comic Sauce Podcast, where we talk comics and comics culture. I am Henry Liu, and today I am joined by Porfirio Rangel. Porfirio, how goes? I'm doing really good, Henry. Happy to be here. Good to see you again. And today we're going to talk about the new Venom movie, Venom, Let There Be Carnage. And um, yeah, this came out a little while ago. We're a little late to the game here. Um, It is, today is November 6th, 2021. The movie released back in October, October 1st, 2021. So it's been out about a month, Um, but I think it's a good time to talk about it because we've both seen it. And um, there seemed to be some Spider-Man repercussions with this one. We'll get into it. (laughs) Um, But uh, yeah, the recently released Morbius trailer uh, could be connected. Everything could potentially be connected here, right? So um, we'll get into it. Uh, But first... Quick heads up, the Comic Sauce podcast is on social media. We are at Comic Sauce Pod on Instagram and Twitter. And uh, yeah, let's talk some Venom. So both you and I did see the new Venom movie in theaters. Mm -hmm. We We also saw the first Venom movie in theaters, right? Um... So I think, you know, that's notable because both Venom movies are considered box office hits and both Venom movies are not too well regarded critically. (laughs) And um, I think, you know, a lot of people are saying like, you know, why are, why are, these movies getting made right because they're just they're not really well made right quote unquote well made um and you know people like us are kind of to blame because we are are handing over our money (laughs) to (laughs) to fund these uh poor quality movies right i guess you could say uh but before we get into that um yeah let's talk a little about a bit about venom one the first venom movie we don't have to get super deep into it but um you know that's been out a few years a few years now uh what's your just general feeling on the first venom movie what are your thoughts for you <laughs> yeah i definitely have mixed feelings um i don't hate it but i don't love it either it's just yeah. kind of there um i think like this is i guess this is the way i always recommend venom that if you legit don't have anything else to watch, but you just want a good like action movie to pass the time, Venom is your to-go movie. <laughs> like, don't make it a priority, but like, just if you just want to watch something to like, be like, oh, to scratch that action itch, then Venom is definitely the movie to watch. Um, Got it. Got it. Yeah. But going off that, yeah, like it's it's not good. It's not good. But I guess like the action and just like the fact that there's a Venom movie just makes up for it, I guess. Yeah. Okay. I get what you're saying. And on a lot of fronts, I do agree. Um, I don't hate it. I also don't love it. Um, it's very schlocky kind of like what I was saying before, it's not a terribly well-made movie. You know, it's not really a quote-unquote good movie, you know, by, you know, uh, by, by a lot of standards, right? Um, mm-hmm. I would say there is kind of a campy charm to it, though. Um, I thought it was kind of fun, and I thought it didn't take itself too seriously so um 
yeah you know at the end of the day I, I had fun with that first Venom movie it's not great and arguably it's not even good <laughs> but um you know it's not completely without any merit um so there is some fun to be had there. Okay. It, it, it's it's so funny you say that because those same remarks about you think saying like it's campy doesn't take itself seriously. I saw that more towards the second movie than the first one. Mm, okay. Well, good segue. Let's get into Venom 2. Venom, let there be carnage. So, you know, a glaring omission from the first Venom movie is Carnage, right? So, well, I should uh, correct that, you know, he doesn't show up prominently, but he does show up at the very end, right? Um, and he does tease a sequel. So sure enough, the sequel did come. And in a lot of ways, it's, it's kind of wish fulfillment for Venom fans, you know, the, the showdown at the end of Venom wasn't Venom versus Carnage, it was Venom versus Riot, right? <laughs> Who the hell's Riot? Mm -hmm. So this is, this is like, this is the matchup everyone wanted, right? Venom versus Carnage. So we finally got it. How did it turn out? Well, uh, let's first talk a little bit about how did we come to see this movie um, in this age of COVID? Uh, it's, you know, movie experiences are all across the board. There's mm -hmm. in person at the theaters, there's streaming, there's premium streaming, there's all kinds of stuff, right? So um, we both did see this in the theaters. Um, when and where did you see the Venom sequel, Perfurio? So yeah, I saw it opening weekend. Um, I went with my dad and my brother. Um, it was my dad's birthday and I was like, oh, like this would be a fun way to uh, go celebrate his birthday because he loves going to the movie theater. And um, I had recommended Venom because I don't remember what else was out that weekend. Um, but that was the only one that stood out to me that I was like, let's go watch. And um, I guess it's an, it was an experience for both both my brother and my dad because they had they'd never seen the first one so the uh, second one um i was kind of like like they didn't even know this was a sequel i just had to explain to them i think you'll be okay about understanding the sequel or anything like that or understanding the origin movie um so yeah i saw it down here in orange county opening weekend and um, I honestly had like, I mean, yeah, like, even though I said like the first one um, wasn't that well received for the second one, I still had like high hopes just because Carnage was in it. I had just read a Carnage um, series that just came out over the summer. Um, and I was like, oh, yay, I can't wait to see this guy. And I guess that's why I hyped myself up for the sequel. <laughs> Got it. Okay, cool. Um, okay, on my end, I saw this uh, not on opening weekend. I actually wasn't planning on watching this in the theaters at all. Uh, but I found myself in... New York City in mid-October on vacation and I did see this movie on vacation on October 13th a couple weeks after release and it was at uh, the Alamo Draft House in Brooklyn which is a really cool movie venue um, highly recommend seeing a movie there okay um at this point, I think we can dive into the movie itself. And before we do that, a quick spoiler alert. Everything's fair game here. We may get into plot spoilers, etc. So you've been warned. All right. So Venom, Let There Be Carnage. What would you think? Um, 
(laughs) (laughs) Now, interesting that you mentioned, like, even with sort of the, you know, somewhat lukewarm quality of the first one, you still had some expectations here. Um, Yeah, I didn't have huge expectations. Um, I, I remember you sent out this really scathing movie review about this movie uh, be- prior to release. Uh, so I definitely had my expectations like tempered. Um, that said, you know, I, I was, you know, had an open mind. Um, I think uh, the director, Andy Serkis was, um, he kind of made it interesting to me because he's just had such a, an interesting career and he's been associated to a lot of cool projects. Um, Mm -hmm. So there was a bit of optimism because of that on my end. So, you know, I wasn't say I wouldn't say I was like really looking forward to this, but um, I went in thinking, hey, maybe this might be good. Maybe this might be interesting. So um, what do you think? What what do you think of this movie? Just kind of general thoughts. No, same thing like you, like I, after, yeah, kind of being like let down a little from the first movie, at first I wasn't so lukewarm about the sequel, especially with um, uh, Woody Harrison playing Carnage. I, I, I don't know, I just didn't think he was the right fit for the role. Um, but later on when it was announced that, yeah, Andy Serkis and that it was confirmed that it was going to be a Carnage movie, I think that gave me like a more lukewarm welcome to the movie. I was like, like you said, Andy has just an amazing career to some really great projects like um, King Kong, Lord of the Rings, um, uh, Black Panther. Like he just, he's a really great actor. Yeah. And, um, and Carnage, like, well, there's not to like about Carnage. He's a freaking psychopath. And so how could you mess that up? Watch the movie and you could, and that answer would be, <laughs> then there's your answer. But um, yeah, I just, I had, I guess, like a little bit of a high expectation for it. Um, and coming out of the movie, like yeah going in i was like this movie's gonna be awesome this movie's gonna be badass and like i was saying this movie i felt like did not take itself seriously i kind of realized like it's strange from the first movie about being funny and not taking itself seriously and i just felt like it totally went that route this way around it was not horror it was not blood and gory like like i expected it was kind of like joke after punchline after punchline and I think once I accept that fact that it was not going to be the movie I had wanted it to be and it was just gonna be like a kind of like um movie that doesn't take itself seriously it was just like here we got this I think once I accepted that fact then I enjoyed it a lot more (laughs) okay Good. So you kind of let go of your expectations and just kind of went with the flow, basically. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, I got it. Interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah, I would say it sounds like you like this movie a lot more than I did <laughs> because <laughs> I'm definitely not a fan. Um, so, yeah, a little bit more on my experience um yeah the the alamo draft house in brooklyn is really cool and just you know alamo draft houses anywhere are cool um but it's a great place to watch a movie um you can order food from your seat which i did and you know as i'm vacation you know i i just went to new york comic-con so I, i was in a good mood and um the movie watching experience that night was great. I had a good time. Okay. So let's separate that a bit. I had a good time watching this movie, but it, you know, to give this movie like a recommendation would be 
an insult to legit good movies, right? <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say. Um, yeah, like th this is just not a quality film, you know? Uh, it's just, there's a lot of problems. Uh, uh, basically, everything about it was like of low quality. <laughs> Let's just say that um, it's hard to explain because like to me, every aspect of it was like was kind of schlocky and and uh, and and low rent in a lot of ways. OK. Um, yeah. You know, it's funny, like if you if you look at the cast in this movie, it's a pretty good cast. Right. We're talking Tom Hardy, Woody Harrelson, Michelle Williams. Naomi Harris, um, you know, it's actors who have been great in other stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And um, we know these are good actors, but they're not good in this movie, right? I mean, any actor is only as good as the script that they're uh, acting off of, right? So I think that's more to blame, but it's it's worth mentioning that it's a great cast, but you know, the acting, acting performances are not great. Um, and like bottom line, I didn't really care. I didn't really care about any of the characters in this movie. I didn't really care about the story in this movie. Um, yeah, I, I just, I had a lot of problems <laughs> watching this one. <laughs> and again, uh, I'm sure we've all been there where, we're in a good mood and we're like, oh, I'm, I'm glad I'm out at the movies. I'm having a good time. And the, and the movie itself maybe isn't so great. Um, that definitely was my experience watching this movie. Um, I had a good time watching it, but I, I cannot in any universe <laughs> recommend this movie. It, just, <laughs> it would just be, I would be ashamed to do <laughs> recommend this movie nobody uh, would trust you after yeah you recommend that we... exactly there you go um so maybe we get maybe we can get into uh some of the specifics right um mm -hmm. we usually start with the good and then go to the bad so yeah maybe we'll highlight um some of the stuff we liked in the movie there was mm -hmm. some stuff i did like it, it wasn't like 100 percent awful to me so uh, there were some aspects that I did enjoy. But yeah, how about you, Preferio? Were there specific things in the movie you liked? Yeah, I guess, like I said, the jokes that they had, like especially between um, Venom and Eddie, um, the relationship they had, I thought it was pretty funny. And like the way Venom would just call Eddie a loser and be like, you need me and this stuff. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I like that relationship. I like uh, kind of, yeah, like seeing um, the action scenes. I definitely wish there was way more like blood and gore. Like, ain't him like carnage killed someone like it was just like a slash there was no blood shown um no like when they bit like a head off or something they kind of did it off screen right um right. uh like i said i guess the action scenes were cool but i just wish there was more especially if you read like the carnage um comics like there's just it's just really freaking bloody and out there <laughs> yeah um yeah. uh what else that like i like the one scene i guess when venom's just like going from host to host and he's like at the club and he's talking about like how eddie totally dissed him and he's just gonna go on and do his, his own thing um but yeah that's it's it's kind of hard to pinpoint the good spots from this film <laughs> where about you did you have any yeah yeah there's so there were some things i liked um you actually named one of them um the uh the voice in eddie's head right so we, we got quite a bit of that in the first venom movie and i liked it there and i also liked it here 
you know, I think it's kind of funny. It's that, that, that banter, right? It's like Eddie Brock versus Venom. And they're just like, they're like the odd couple in a way, right? Mm -hmm. um, I found that pretty funny, you know? You mentioned there's a lot of jokes and whatnot. Like a lot of the comedy in this movie just didn't work for me. Um, but I, I did like the, uh, like the banter, you know, the, the banter inside of Eddie Brock's brain, right? Mm -hmm. I thought that was funny. Um, now, another thing I thought was cool was the Carnage character design. I thought Carnage looked pretty badass in this movie. Um, yeah, you know, the look of Carnage is really straight out of the comics. He looks like the car the carnage from Marvel comics. And um, yeah, you know, uh, the, the visual effects from Venom one and Venom two are okay. You know, nothing great, but um, I just kind of liked the, the, the visual design of carnage. Like, like I was saying, he, he looks cool and he's comics faithful and um just kind of uh, visually worked for me. I, I liked the way Carnage looked here. So, uh, you know, hey, <laughs> I did enjoy <laughs> that. <laughs> Here's a plus. Um, and, uh, okay, we're going to get into this a lot more later. But the post credit scene in Venom 2 is really cool. <laughs> uh, it's almost like it almost made the movie like worth watching just for this scene you know um yeah well, yes, well, 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 right <laughs> yeah seriously that two minutes post credits is probably better than the whole movie yeah i think so um we'll, we'll circle back we'll come back to that yeah. <laughs> um but uh, awesome post credit scene uh, that's that has to be said okay what about the cons what didn't work so great I mean, there's a lot <laughs> on my side, <laughs> uh, but anything, yeah, anything specific that you didn't like about this one? Like I said, I think the number the number one thing was that it was PG thirteen. Like, I definitely wanted a hard rated R, blood and gory, um, inspired film, and if it wasn't gonna be that, I kind of did one like a more darker horror edge. And I wasn't even given that either. <laughs> um, so, yeah, like I said, I had just, I guess, a little bit of high expectations just because the villain who was who was going to be the main villain and who's directing the film, Andy Serkis, and I was let down, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, I'm totally with you. Like, I, I think of this film series and it's definitely uneven. You know, I think I had some fun with the first Venom. Had, you know, a pleasurable night at, night at the movies watching this one. Um, but man, if they were to go the rated R route, these movies could have been so much better. You know, like, I, you know, I'm not even high quality, but at least more fun, you know, some blood and guts, some more F bombs and, you know, mm -hmm. just just like it, the whole the whole thing seemed kind of muzzled. Right. Like there's violence, mm -hmm. but not that much violence. And there's comedy, but it's not like edgy enough to be really funny. Um, and just. Yeah, and there, there are horror elements, which is cool. Yeah, I think we talked about that in our review of Venom 1. We were talking about how this is a superhero movie with horror elements, which is pretty cool, you know? Like, um, I would see love to see more of this kind of stuff. Like, so far, there's Venom. There's uh, that, um, that shitty New Mutants movie. Um <laughs> But I think there's potential there, like uh, superheroes plus horror, you know. Um, but if you're 
doing a PG-13 movie, you just, you, you can't push the envelope, right? It's, you can't really have a, like, a, a legit horror movie. You can't get a horror movie that you actually want to watch, right? So, like, on all fronts, the horror, the comedy, the violence, it's all kind of toned down. And that's just too bad. You're, you're really fighting an uphill battle uh, if you're not getting the R rating here. So Ooh. what can you get, right? What, you know, you look at the MCU. You, there, there are a lot of things you can do without the R rating. Uh, but, man, this movie doesn't hit on any of that. I talked about it earlier, but I don't think the acting's good. I don't care about the characters. The story is like, yeah, you know, ho hum. Like something about uh, Cletus Cassidy, aka Carnage, wanting to get his girlfriend back, um, and just I don't know. I, <laughs> I I kind of gave up on caring about it pretty early on. Um, and yeah, bottom line is uh, didn't really care about what was going on. Um, even then, I could maybe uh, get some enjoyment out of it if there was uh some fun campiness or some good action scenes but i even thought it fell short on both of those you know i thought there was some campy charm to the first venom movie i didn't think there really was here like i, I was saying earlier I, I didn't really find this movie all that funny you know i, I like the uh the Venom, uh, you know, voice in Eddie's head thing. But that was about it. Like all the other jokes, uh, they didn't really work for me. Um, and the action, I thought the action was like overly CG'd. Yeah, it was that oh, that problem with like two giant CG monsters fighting each other. It's just not that compelling. Like we talked a little bit about this uh, with our Shang-Chi review. Love the Shang-Chi movie, except that silly end where with those two big CG dragons fighting each other. Like, who cares, right? Um, you know, finally we get to see Venom versus Carnage in a movie. Uh, and when we finally get that, it's like, oh, this is exciting. But in the end, it's just like two big CG monsters fighting. And it's just sort of like, yeah, <laughs> that, that left left me uh kind of hanging too so yeah a lot of problems here and um yeah uh, you named a big one without the r rating you you really think like is this gonna work and um it could work movies can work even movies like this that are like kind of have a darker edge to it um, they don't necessarily need an R rating, but uh, um, yeah, there was there was uh, there were too many shortcomings, uh, so just didn't work for me. Just overall, didn't quite work. No, yeah, I agree with a lot of points you're saying. Like I, the acting was just not that good. Um, the characters you really did not care for, like sure venom was funny but eddie brock was i really didn't care he just seemed like a guy who complained a lot like <laughs> he just complained a lot yeah, you know yeah. so i was really over it his ex-girlfriend and her boyfriend like they just seemed like unnecessary characters you know like they were just kind of there for comedic relief um Rudy Harrelson again like I didn't I wasn't so hot on the idea of him playing Cassidy when that was revealed in the first film and then I was like okay you know what I'll give him a chance you know because he does have you, you know for, I don't know for him I he's like a hit or miss like I liked him in the Hunger Games films but other films it's just a total hit or miss and this one was a very big miss. I did, I just don't get why they casted him for this role. Like that wig that he wore was so stupid. <laughs> um, 
the his backstory to why he's a villain and evil guy in the mental hospital was really dumb um and then that whole love story between him and shriek was stupid and unnecessary um and then shriek was just another character that was let down because i like her in the comics and you know i don't know it's just one thing over another for me like i didn't i just did not care for any actor <laughs> in this any actor or character in this movie yeah it's pretty wild because the cast is pretty good you know like um a lot of times you take like a good dramatic actor and you put him in a superhero movie and you're like wow they were so good in this other thing now they're so bad what the hell is up with that and a lot of mm -hmm. it is like the genre right with superhero movies oftentimes actors just are limited right um but you know a good counter argument to that is tom hardy himself like tom hardy played bane in dark knight rice and i thought he was so awesome in that movie and it's the same genre they're both superhero movies but you compare his performance as bane versus his performance as eddie brock and it's like damn dude <laughs> what happened and i think that kind of goes back to what i was saying earlier about the script right um if you don't have a decent script then you know even the greatest actor on the planet can look really bad right so mm -hmm. I, I think the script can be uh to blame at least in part here um but yeah yeah definitely a lot of shortcomings and um yeah so why don't we move on here i think we're both kind of chomping at the bit to get into the post credit stuff and the spider-man related stuff um but before we do that let's give our rating let's rate venom let there be carnage out of five what would you give this movie you know, I don't think I've ever done it on the podcast, but I think I would give this one probably a one out of five. You're going one here, huh? Yeah. <laughs> wow. No, I had the impression that you actually kind of had fun with this movie. No? <laughs> like, like I said, I once I accepted the fact that it was not going to be the movie I expected, I had fun with it, but... I had a movie expectation to this movie, and I feel like that's the least I should have got with if you're dealing with characters like Venom and Carnage. And the fact that they weren't able to deliver that, I was just kind of let down. Um, I feel like even if I gave like a two, that's still kind of a recommendation for me. And like you, I wouldn't just I would just I wouldn't recommend let there be carnage to anybody <laughs> oh okay like, venom i could low-key recommend like if you have nothing else to watch you go watch venom let there be carnage if you legit have nothing else to watch and you already finished watching all sharknado movies then go ahead and watch <laughs> let there be carnage but um yeah even after Sharknado, you would, you would put it after those movies. That's saying something. Wow. Okay. And just to be clear, uh, you know, by our scale, we've been saying that a three is a recommendation and a two is not. Uh, but you're going with the, with the one here, huh? With the numero yeah. uno. Damn. Yeah. That's, that's major. Okay. Um, Wow. And and just uh, before we get off that, it sounds like what you're saying is you had a similar experience to me where you actually had like a pleasurable night out at the movies and you were able to like enjoy yourself. Right. But the mm -hmm. movie itself, you're just saying is not good and you just cannot will not recommend it to anyone right no <laughs> okay okay i'm good. not so, that evil <laughs> all right so i think we're speaking the same language here um so i stand corrected because uh, i said earlier it sounded like you like the movie more than me um now i'm thinking you probably 
dislike the movie more than me, um, I'm going with it too. Um, like I'm saying, uh, not a recommendation. Uh, but I think the few bright spots, you know, elevated elevated it from uh, the lowest possible score of one. So I'll go with two. Um, yeah, maybe maybe the 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 one factor is the the character design on Carnage. Like, dude, if they were to have Carnage in the MCU, I hope he would look like this or of this caliber. Like, I thought he looked cool. Um, you know, that's to say <laughs> nothing of of the acting, the directing, the script, the, uh-huh. the, the, the visual effects, all that stuff about this movie. But um, uh, just the, the Carnage character design, I, 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 I dig it. Mm-hmm. Just yeah. Before we go to the post credit scene, yeah, like it's so weird that you know, like I think Venom made uh, um, broke box office records for being like the biggest box opening during COVID. I think of eight hundred million. Like that's more than Shang Chi, more than Black Widow, more than Godzilla versus King Kong. So. Obviously, people liked it, and yeah, there was some, you know, I guess like, pe- like uh, better, better responses than us. But so, <laughs> don't take our word for it, I guess. <laughs> well, that's a good point because you know we're here giving two thumbs down, basically, and we're saying, oh, there are so many other better superhero movies out there but look what what did we do we paid money to see this movie (laughs) we contributed to this big box office so we have only ourselves to blame blame if they continue to make movies like this right so (laughs) um yeah let's let let that be known (laughs) okay but just to wrap up on my rating two out of five not a recommendation um simply a bad movie on essentially all fronts um not completely uh unredeemable i guess you could say um but uh not a good movie we'll leave it at that okay Mm -hmm. so let's get on to more interesting discussion let's talk about that post credit scene this was a big surprise to me i'll give a little description but basically at the end of venom 2 eddie brock is transported somewhere right like out of nowhere he just kind of ends up in a hotel room and the tv is on and on tv we see we see uh j jonah jameson right and he's talking about none other than peter parker and we see tom holland as peter parker and eddie brock is seeing this so it appears that uh the tom holland spider verse will or has crossed paths with the Tom Hardy Venom verse, right? <laughs> and um, whereas before, you know, there was some question as to would these just be completely separate things? Now it's like, oh, what's happening here? Uh, is Venom joining the MCU? Is there going to be some sort of buildup to the Sinister Six? What is in store in this new Spider-Man movie? Because there's already tons of speculation about old Spider-Man villains from the Sam Raimi movies coming back and villains from the Andrew Garfield Spider-Man movies coming back and villains from (laughs) the current trilogy coming back too. Now, Venom also, uh, I mean, like, my head was, like, completely blown away uh, with this scene. 
uh, yeah, I'm still kind of processing it all. What, uh, what's your take on this scene? What are your thoughts? I was definitely blown away when that whole post credit scene was going on. I was like, oh my gosh, this is big. This is like, you know, kind of as big as like, I don't, I don't know, <laughs> as when Spider-Man was first announced that he was going to be the MCU. Because it's just like, you know, Sony and Marvel have always kept like that, um, you know, Disney Marvel have always kept like that distance about like crossing paths between um, their the Spider-Man rights and everything, the Spider-Man property. Yeah. And so this is kind of like the the first acknowledgement before um, Spider-Man No Way Home where the two, like two different movie franchises have crossed paths, you know, like, it, so it's just like, oh my gosh, like, can't believe this is actually going to happen because, yeah, for years, ever since the first Venom movie was announced that people have been wanting this crossover and the fact that we're getting it, especially like, two months out from No Way Home, now people can't help but be like, oh my gosh, is Venom going to be in No Way Home? Like, what does the Spider-Verse mean for, like, the two um, companies or for the MCU as a whole? Like, there's just, there's just a lot of talk about, like, what that means for within these movie franchises and what's going on, like, behind the scenes with, like, uh, yeah like character property and actor contracts and all that kind of stuff so uh it just has a much like bigger conversation than like a two minute <laughs> post credit scene yeah yeah oh you, you you nailed it there it's like a two minute scene but the ram the ramifications of the scene are big right so many questions now so many questions and i think we can address a lot of these questions here and now like we can kind of free form discuss but any questions you have just throw them out there um now i'm gonna pose something real quick um, okay. like with this post-credit scene it really begs the question of what is going on with the Tom Holland Spider-Man trilogy, right? Um, there are some theories and I, I, I'm kind of buying this one, but I'm thinking, you know, as sad as it may sound, I'm thinking that Spider-Man No Way Home will be the exit from the MCU for the Tom Holland Peter Parker. I mean that sucks, right? Uh, but it's 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 sure sounding like it, right? Like we saw in the trailer, Doctor Strange does this thing, and all of a sudden, Peter Parker is like encountering the Alfred Molina, Doc Ock, and the Willem Dafoe, Green Goblin, and it sure as hell seems like he's in the Spider-Man Sony verse, right? And everything we've seen since that trailer seems to sort of back that up right it seems like okay they want to throw venom in with tom holland uh we should talk about the morbius trailer that just dropped that kind of continues that conversation it just seems like sony wants to take tom holland and put him in the sony verse right and um, just sort of cut ties with the MCU. Um, I, I sadly, I think that's that is what is happening here. Um, yeah, what, what are your thoughts on that? You think that might be the case? I could see that happening. Um, yeah, I see like Spider Man, especially with the storyline that they're going in No Way Home, how. Spider-Man's identity is revealed and Peter Parker wants to go back to when nobody knew his identity and then Doctor Strange comes and tries to make that spell but then um, 
creates like a ripple within the multiverse. Um, I could see like, yes, yeah, Spider-Man exiting the MCU and joining more of like this like Sony-verse. Um, Cause you know, I think there's already like talks of, I think Andy Serkis like hinted that he's, uh, w- w- especially with this post credit scene that he's kind of excited to see like what kind of possibilities he could do for uh, Venom 3. Um, mm-hmm. Like having like more crossovers with Spider-Man. So it seems like Spider-Man might be more going to like like we said the Sp- the Sony verse, um, but I think overall like because I I I'm not a hundred percent sure, but I think Tom Holland's contract expires after No Way Home, and he kind of says that he wants to leave the role at least for now like just to continue doing other projects um i don't yeah i don't think he's given like insight about like returning anytime soon but with spider-man and at the point that he is right now in the mcu phase four storyline you don't need spider-man either like, he's just a big name that everybody loves or anything. And if you do need Spider-Man, like, there's other Spider-Man people that um, can easily take the role that's already happening now, you know, like Hawkeye and um, other characters. But, like, you, ha- you could use Miles Morales or I think they're making a Spider-Woman TV show coming out, um, uh, Silk. TV show, so there's just a whole bunch of other Spider people that um, Marvel can utilize rather than just Peter Parker. Yeah, good take. And yeah, I think Miles Morales may weigh heavily in this conversation because I'm thinking if Kevin Feige can introduce Miles Morales into the MCU, he would be okay with letting go of Peter Parker. You know, there is a lot of refreshing new storylines he could explore with Miles. And it would be, you know, kind of faithful to the comics because that's how Miles Morales was introduced into the Ultimate Universe. He didn't uh, fight alongside Peter Parker. He replaced Peter Parker, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, So that kind of, that prospect makes me feel like, okay, there there might be something to this rumor thing where uh, Spider-Man is, the the Peter Parker, Tom Holland Spider-Man will be exiting the Mm -hmm. MCU. So... Yeah, it's kind of sad. I mean, look at what uh, that Tom Holland Spider-Man has done in the MCU, right? The uh, two Spider-Man movies to date, the third one coming, and uh, Infinity War and Endgame. I mean, that's a pretty fucking good track record, right? <laughs> um, and I, dude, I'd be really sad to see him leave all of that. Um, but I kind of feel like that's what's happening here. Okay, so what else? Let's talk some Sinister Six. Okay, so yeah, probably more than any like Tom Holland is leaving this, the MCU talk is uh, a lot of Sinister Six discussion because um, there was already that feel to it when we got the little hints at Doc Ock and Green Goblin in the No Way Home trailer. But then, uh, yeah, what has happened since? Since then, we got this Venom 2 post credit scene. So all of a sudden, it's like, oh, shit, Venom might be part of uh, No Way Home also and a potential uh, Sinister Six member. So there's three, right? Doc Ock, 
Gobby and Venom. And then there's Morbius. Again, with the first Morbius trailer, there really wasn't a whole lot of indication that there would be a tie-in with Spider-Man. But now, there sure as hell is. Let's talk a little bit about the new Morbius trailer. So, with the new Morbius trailer, uh, Michael Keaton appears in this movie. And um, instantly, there's a connection to... The Tom Holland Spider-Man movies, because of course Michael Keaton played the Vulture in Homecoming. Mm-hmm. What else? Uh, there's a Venom reference. There's a Spider-Man poster with the words "murderer" written on it. Uh, there's a very subtle blink and you miss it moment where there's a Daily Bugle newspaper with references to Rhino and Black Cat. So uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> more <laughs> crazy speculation right uh but just continuing on here yeah F- morbius potentially the fourth member of the senator six uh vulture now that he has appeared in that uh morbius trailer he's a potential fifth and i guess he was potential all along because he was in homecoming and um guess what there's a craven the hunter movie in the works from Sony starring a- uh, Aaron Taylor Johnson. Mm-hmm. Uh, so he's a potential sixth on the team. Uh, so there's that. Uh, there's a whole lot of other supervillains who might be involved. Um, there's Mysterio, of course. Uh, you know, with Mysterio, you really never know. He, seemingly he died in Far From Home, but you, know, you never know with Mysterio. Scorpion was uh hinted at in homecoming electro is rumored to be in no way home i, I don't know if it's even a rumor isn't he at, like jamie fox confirmed to be in uh no way home? He, he's confirmed he's confirmed to be in it and getting a whole other character design than what he got in the amazing spider-man series there you go and then uh, again the the easter egg references to rhino and black cat in the Morbius trailer. So yeah, there's another one, two, three, five more Spider-Man villains. So uh, yeah, it, it's definitely uh, Sinister Six speculation time. Now question, do you think we will see the Sinister Six in No Way Home? Oh yeah, I think there's no doubt about it. No doubt, wow. That's a bold statement but i could see it happening um i feel like they're going to tease it more than actually have like a full-on team-up battle or anything but i could see at the end where they like get together and maybe like the next movie spider-man actually battles them something like that um but i i think i might be with you i think i think if i had to bet on one or the other i would probably put money on the sinister six appearing you know in its entirety all six members in Mm -hmm. no way home now maybe it will be just like a real quick shot of them and and maybe they don't even stay together because it's a multiverse thing but um yeah i think yeah i i think i think we might see it I, i could definitely see that happening and, yeah, uh, that's that's exciting. It's an exciting this, prospect. This is this is how I see it planning out. Okay. I see it like Spider-Man goes through all the the universes, the semi rain, the um, amazing Spider-Man universes, and then um, you know he's encountering the different villains, and as he's going to the different multiverses, the villains kind of follow him, and then there's like this like whole like. Um, team up of the sinister six like uh going up against like spider-man and spider-man like tom holland spider-man's like he can't do it by himself and then oh here comes like it's like end game here comes these portals to the left of him <laughs> and out comes andrew garfield and toby mcguire and then they come and defeat the sinister six wow <laughs> Like <laughs> that's pretty far out, man. 
<laughs> but man, if that happened, that would be amazing. I mean, it's possible. Like uh, with this movie, yeah, I can't wait to watch this movie. I cannot wait to see what happens. I don't know if it's going to get that bonkers, but uh, it has the potential to get that bonkers. I would say that. You, you know who I would say is a, another big. I mean, I really, I like, I think it's pretty low, but I feel like another villain that's a potential Sinister Six um, member is Kingpin from the Daredevil Netflix series. Oh, interesting take. Yeah, you know, I mean, I, I'm at the point where it's like anything is possible. Right? You oh, just, hell yeah. You, you just yeah. don't know. Yeah. So we'll see. We, we we shall see we shall see but yeah any any prospect of the sinister six getting together getting together is exciting spider-man battling the sinister six hell yeah hell yeah so we shall see mm -hmm. we shall see since okay let me ask one more question like since we're you know this was generally a venom podcast um what how like what do you think are the chances of us seeing venom in no way home well look the end of venom 2 sure as hell teased a venom appearance in no way mm -hmm. home and um yeah i i feel like we'd be cheated if venom didn't show up somehow right like it's almost like they're advertising him to be in it, right? I'd I'd feel cheated, right, if, if he didn't show up. Uh, or so, he could just, or or he could, they could just be teasing a potential Venom three movie with J. Jonah Jameson and Peter Parker in it. Yeah, yeah. I guess there's that, but to me, it really felt like. You know, they were teasing good. Venom yeah. to be in No Way Home, period. You know, like, look, the previous Venom movie, they had a post credit scene of Into the Spider-Verse, right? They were just promoting the next Spider-Man project. So I kind of liken this post credit scene to that, where they're just like promoting the next one. So, yeah, it, it just that's what it feels like now. How prominent will Venom be in that movie? I kind of get the feeling it won't be prominent at all. Um, in fact, all these characters we're mentioning, I mean, there are so many we've mentioned. So most likely, you know, no single one of them will be like, you know, really significant in the movie. Maybe we're looking at a lot of cameo appearances here. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I, I just don't know. I, I, I can't really wrap my head around it. It's uh, it's almost too much to take. Uh, but I love it, man. I, I kind of love like not knowing at all what's going to happen. <laughs> right. Like uh, with a lot of this uh, superhero movie stuff, you kind of have an idea of what's coming. But man, just with this Spider-Man stuff and you know how much I love Spider-Man, uh, I just don't know what's coming and it's kind of a cool feeling just not knowing it's exciting yeah like it's mysterious mm -hmm. okay uh you know a little bit of, a little bit more about miles morales like i love miles and i cannot wait to see him in a movie um but i was thinking a little bit more about where the mcu is headed and it sure feels like miles morales is like a great fit for the future of the MCU. I mean, the future of the MCU is looking very diverse and inclusive. And that is like Miles Morales, right? That is like what he's all about, right? You know, in the comics, he's on the, the team, the champions, right? Uh, mm -hmm. You know, Kamala Khan, Miss Marvel is on that team, <laughs> right? Uh, hint, hint, you know, she's getting her own show soon. Uh, so it just, it really feels like uh, Miles would be a perfect fit for where the MCU is heading. Um, so yeah, just kind of reinforcing what I was saying earlier. 
um, I could see a little swap, you know, we, uh, uh, Feige is like, we'll give you Peter Parker if you give us Miles, you know, kind of thing. Yeah, that's that's how it's been with Disney and Sony, right? Unfortunately, it's it's not like a partnership; it's more of a, you know, mercenary kind of relationship. Like they're renting out Spider Man, and like we're putting Spider Man in cool movies, but you know, you have to give us the rights, and just like there's this this like quid pro quo thing going on. Uh, so it's kind of unfortunate, but, uh, that's how it's been. Um, so if that's how it's going to be, that's how it's going to be. Um, but I wouldn't hate it, you know, a little Peter Parker for miles Morales trade. Uh, we'll see. Um, that said, I kind of doubt that we're going to get miles in no way home. That kind of popped in my head. It's like, Oh, uh, like everyone's wanting to see miles Morales in live action movies right um when is he gonna appear uh i i i don't think he will be in no way home um i kind of hope he won't because it seems so crowded already um like i want his introduction to be like really impactful right so Mm -hmm. um we'll see but yeah i kind of don't think that's gonna happen i think that's for the future and i think that's gonna be uh like mcu proper Here's another question that just popped into my head. So I mentioned MCU proper. Uh, this new Spider-Man movie, does this feel like an MCU movie or does it feel like a Sony movie? I feel like whew, definitely more MCU. I think yeah. just because the whole Doctor Strange element, I guess. Yeah, I see what you're saying there. But the trilogy to date has been in the MCU, but obviously, you know, co-production with Sony and there have been Sony elements in it. But I'm telling you, it feels like this one, it's it's just going to extract itself from the MCU and become this big Sony bonanza, (laughs) you know, (laughs) like, you know, they're, they're exploring like, past spider-man characters in sony movies uh it just it's it seems like it's starting to get into that territory where it might be more of a sony movie again it's just i don't know what's gonna happen we'll see but uh that that, that's kind of a feeling i'm getting that Mm -hmm. uh yeah i I, okay here's what i think is gonna happen is it's gonna Ultimately, it's going to feel more like a Sony movie than the previous couple Spider-Man movies. You know, that's what I think. Mm-hmm. Whose logo are we going to see on that? Do, do we see the Sony logo <laughs> on on the on Spider-Man movies like Homecoming and, and Far From Home? That is a good question. I feel like in the end credits, we do see Sony, but I don't recall seeing them in the opening credits. I mean, you you see like produced by Amy Pascal and you see all like the the Sony people in the credits, but Mm -hmm. I don't recall seeing like Sony logos all over the place. Like with uh, Into the Spider-Verse, like Sony is like all over the place in the beginning, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, You see that, that a Sony Columbia woman you know uh mm-hmm. but yeah with with uh with homecoming and far from home yeah that they, they felt pretty mcu proper mcu you know going in could be all changing though could be changing big we'll time just wait wait and see yeah but you know like uh, what i said earlier about tom holland like so many great MCU moments, right? His own movies were really good. And then just like these legendary moments in Endgame and Infinity War. Like, like he's he's good. <laughs> like I mean, and I'm good with what he's contributed, right? So if this is it for him in the MCU, I, I kind of I'm kind of like I was saying before I'd be sad. And yeah, I'd be sad, but I, I'd be okay with it. I'd be like, dude, you 
you, you, you killed it, dude. <laughs> and yeah, uh, yeah. props to you. Farewell and good luck, you know? Yeah, so, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, all good, all good. All right, with that, we can wrap up the episode. This is Farewell from Henry and Porfirio. <laughs>